y'all and welcome to the book review for The Midnight Kingdom by Tara Sim. If this is your first video, I'm Morgan and thank you so much for clicking on it. I'm going to try to probably do this one spoiler free, but this is a sequel novel. So the video in itself will kind of be a spoiler if you haven't read the first book. So if you haven't read City of Dusk, I don't recommend you watch this. Just going to go there. Okay into the review. First up, let's have a refresher for City of Dusk. I did. I did do a review on this one. Okay, so what happened in City of Dusk though if you're not going to go watch that? It's okay. I, I don't blame you. I watched it this morning and I'm like, oh my god. In the book, we follow six characters plus one that's like in the intermissions that you have no idea who that person is. I'm pretty sure they're only in the intermissions before it's between parts. Okay. Mm. Uh, four of them are the heirs, descendants of the gods of the, this universe that they're in. That each god has control of a specific realm. But a century or two ago, the realms were closed off, separated from each other. And this whole novel takes place in the realm of Verte, Verte which is the goddess Dia. That's her realm. And our whole book in this one takes place in the city of Nexus, or the city of Dusk. These four heirs, we have Dia's descendant, Angelica Mardova, who can control all the elements. And then you have Nicholas Seer, who is the descendant of Phos, who is the god of light. So he can control, he can kind of control light and he has a little light ball familiar. It's so cute. It's so cute. Then you have uh, Risha Varkov. Varkov? Uh, should have put the disclaimer already that names will be mispronounced. She is the descendant of Thana, the goddess of death from Morte. And then you have Teessa Lastrider, who is the descendant of Nyx, who is the god of dark. And also though, from Teessa, you will also get chapters with her older brother Dante's perspective, because he was actually the heir of the family, being the oldest sibling. And with Teessa's power, she is a shade so she can control darkness, make things dark around her, make herself invisible in shadows. Then you also have Julian, I don't remember what Julian's last name is, who is a hunter which is an association within their kingdom that the king has that goes out and battles like monsters that you know bother them and he has a hidden ability which is he's a beast speaker so he can kind of talk to these animals and control them and that way he can control, like defeat them easier. In this one though, as the realm has been cut off from the other realms, it Nexus is dying. Verite is dying. They know it's dying. There's weird weather patterns. The crops are failing. It's too hot. It, all of the descendants of the gods though find this very, very troubling where their parents are more concerned with who will be next on the throne because the king doesn't have heirs. So all of their parents are by, vying for the throne. While as the heirs, except Angelica, are more concerned that the realm is dying and how to save the realm. They will want to try to break down the seals between them because they feel that will save their realm. They'll be able to open trade again. They'll be able to you know, find ways to save the realm. And um, they believe trying to get a hold of the gods because the gods don't know what's happening in this realm is going to be one way to do it. And that that's this book. That's this book of what happens get to that point. The pacing is kind of slow until something happens and then action. And the end of the book is big action and it leaves you with where the seals are blown wide open. Nope, not wide right open. Yeah, kind of. And some of our characters are no longer in Nexus. And that is where it leaves you to pick up on the next book. And I was like, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for the Midnight Kingdom. Now, in the Midnight Kingdom, we still follow the same amount of characters, though I do believe that we see more from Dante in this book than we did in the last one. Just going slowly based off my memory, I think we do get a little bit more of Dante here in this one and finding out what's going on with him and his demon. Because, yeah, something I didn't remember when I first picked this book up is what the demons were. And then, so... Of course, we did find out through that book that there had been a fifth god and a fifth descendant that was Ostium. Ostrum? Mm. 
Ostium might have been the realm. Ostrum. Can't remember how to pronounce that. And this is where the demons came from because that realm was destroyed by the other gods when they killed that god and all the people there they could handle the ether well that's what they call it nexus they call it ether um were cast out into the cosmos and they the strong ones became demons and that is what the people in nexus see as demons now the ether though is what angelica can finds out that she can manipulate more than four elements, that there's also this ether. And in this book, Angelica is actually traveling to another kingdom in Verite to try to find a specific thing to help control her powers, to try to open the seals again. In, in this realm, it's called Kude. And I liked actually Angelica's story in this one, kind of so much more. And you, you do see kind of Angelica have this character growth that she did not have in the last one in that, you know, she's learning to control her power. She's learning to accept help and be, uh, you know, nice to people, caring about other people. She did have way too much of a concern for the throne still at the beginning. I did not understand it, but she does actually want to try to open the seal to get the other heirs back in this book and finding out how to use Kude and that. Yes. Now the character that I liked their story the most in the last book was Risha. And in this book, she is in Morte with Jazz as they are trying to find a way to get back to Nexus because they are stuck there. And as of the land of the dead and she's alive, her body doesn't do so well there. So pretty much the entire book though, she's in Morte and her story is kind of slow and it is sad at points. But I mean, the pacing of this book, we'll get into that in a minute. So I did not enjoy hers quite as much in this one, which makes me sad because I did like her so much in the last book. My favorite character in the last book, though, was definitely Teessa. I'm saying that right. <sighs> I feel like she wasn't done right in this book either. Like, she had gotten so much better, you know, from how she was at the through the first book to the last book, realizing that going off on alone, trying to make yourself a monster, the things you did, that that wasn't right. And I feel like slowly she was getting better through this book. She was coming to terms with things. She was realizing some bits, kind of like how to do things better. And then the end of the book. Like, I'm so mad at the end of this book for how they did her. So mad. But not now. Okay, not now. Nick's character. As I said, like, for the first book, when that review, uh, Nick, with his powers... Is kind of the weakest. Yes, Angelica did not have full use of her powers, but if she did, she would be stronger than all of them. Nick's powers, even though he feels like he'd like lost part of his light and everything after his brother died, he his powers were kind of the weakest. But I never thought Nick was weak like as a person and mentally until this book. And he, like his chapters were so short through most of the book until kind of towards the end when like he things. I'm not gonna say it. But because of how his chapters went, he was just like, gosh, you are the weakest person I have ever met. Weakest willed person. And how you were dating Teessa, who was like super strong willed and knows what, like she's going to do it no matter what. Oh my God. I, I still, you know, I'm still okay with shipping them, even though the book is doing things. The book is doing things. Then we have... A C, da, da, da. Julian's character. Julian's character did get a lot, I feel like, more development. He's figuring out how to like get in touch with his magic more, do more things with it. And he actually, you know, kind of spoke to his god and accepted the fact that probably he's an heir. And yet you find out, okay, so he is an heir, but yet also an heir to a demon. Like, there, there's a lot going on with Julian's bloodline. A lot. So... Yeah, I mean, I want to see more about that. I don't know how they could figure out more about that, but I do. And then in the interim bits, just like in the last book, we still have that uh, that one character that uh, does the interim bits. And it's, it's a bit different, though, from the last one. It was mostly like showing him talking to the entity that way. But in this one, it, the, we have the entity who is actually 
monologuing a bit and then we do have this other character though that will say a bit and at one point like Braley even breaks into it and then like is back. So that was very interesting. I actually found some of those interims kind of moving because it gives you a bit of backstory and coloring that you wouldn't have had. It almost almost makes you feel for something but no. In this book the magic that you see I I don't know I did not see any of the characters using the magic as much as like you saw Angelica or you saw Julian. Teyessa couldn't use her abilities through most of the book. Nick couldn't use his abilities through most of the book. And Risha being in Morte, there was not much need for necromancy abilities. So there was not actually whole tons of magic in the book, except for those two characters. You could say Dante, but nah, nah. I don't know. I don't want to say Dante as much because it didn't, it didn't feel like it. He cloaked himself in shadows maybe once or twice, but then for the Conjurer people. So yeah, I didn't, I, there was not as much magic in this book. Lead us in then to the pacing. <laughs> like I said, this is probably going to be a shorter review. The pacing of this book, if you were hoping that it would be more fast paced since everything was already laid out in the first book, it's not. It's not. Because all of our characters are now in different realms. Nothing hardly takes place in Nexus. Angelica travels to this other kingdom. Julian, Tess, and Nick are all in Nar no Narcross? Are in the Dark Knight realm of Nyx. So you're finding out about that and finding about those people and how that works. And uh, Risha is in Morte, so you're finding about Morte. Everybody is somewhere else in this book besides where we were in the first book. So we're finding about this place, which Personally, I don't mind so much. I would have liked a slightly faster paced book, like maybe it could have even been shorter because of it, things, but I don't mind finding out and expanding our world. That's okay. More magic with the world expansion, eh, kind of could have been cool. There, like I said, Angelicus was actually one of the better things because it, what happened? Did I say that? I think I did say that, yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna get into spoilers, but the ending, I just have to say that the ending highly upset me because of how it did a specific character. And also, like, the last book's ending was epic, right? It was this big battle between the heirs with the gods. Epic! And this one, it did not. It was not as much. It was drawn out over, like, so many chapters and it was trying to be big. But it just wasn't. It could not compare to the ending of the first book and the level of that. It just couldn't to me. And after the big epic thing, and they, they're all kind of grouped together, and Angelica says the stupidest thing. I'm sorry. We know that the fifth realm died because the other gods killed Ostrom, Ostrom, whichever one the god's name was. The realm died because the god died. So why, this is a spoiler now, why would Angelica say, I know what we have to do, we're going to kill the gods. That's not going to help your realm. You started out all of this to save your realm from dying. We're gonna kill the gods. But that's that's not the thing that really made me angry, but that's just a stupid thing. There were some things towards the end that were supposed to be shocky twist things. Both of those so were so blatantly obvious. So so obvious. One of them it did take a little bit and I'm like, okay, that's that's gonna be this happening. The other one, you knew it as soon as the character came back into scene. It just like the way it was described and I'm like come on come on they betrayed you you know this now you know this dude that should have been better done so the, there was those things that were supposed to be revelation betrayal whatever's saw it right away I'm sorry you'll probably see it too and then one thing like the heirs were all trying to find the fulcrums of the gods to get, you know, this little bit of God's power to help them be able to do something in this book. Like each of the heir, heirs ended up going after this, their God's fulcrum. The one that Risha got though, that her ancestor had made to help defeat the kings of the netherworld, underworld, Morte. How is that their God's, her God's fulcrum though? Because she made it for, because of what she made it from. I can't, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say it's where, but it just doesn't seem to work. It doesn't seem to work because of what it was made from. I'm sorry. It doesn't. Yeah. Okay. My rating though. Let's go ahead and say the rating. And we'll end the video out and hope this has gone well. 
The rating of this book though is ended up being a four stars. So a little bit lower than the first one, mostly because I kind of expected more to happen in it, more things to be found, revealed, solved, just more of something, more of something. Character growth by anybody. We got Angelica, but that was about the only one. Will I read the next one? Yes. Yes, I'm going to read the next one because they're not, they still haven't saved the realm or opened up the realms to travel between everywhere. If you love the first one, go read this one. Go ahead and read it. If you are so, so on the first one, maybe wait until the next one does come out and then you can just read them together. And that way you might not feel as, Ugh, I just, I'm done with this. I think possibly if you were more on the fence about the first one, then just hold off on reading this one until the next one does come out. I don't know if it's going to be a series or a trilogy. I'm not sure yet. I haven't seen to know for sure. But yeah, I'm still though, still going to recommend this one. The first one, yes, it was an awesome system. It was a flushed out, fantastic world. This one gave us more of the universe, the realms, and how everything's connected and so there's that we move forward a little bit i hope though that this review was at least helpful a little bit informative it gave you a glimpse into what's happening of this book and that maybe you liked it hopefully it wasn't confusing and i did try not to do spoilers in this one at all i tried guys i tried <laughs> I hope you liked it though and if you did maybe go check out some of my other videos or subscribe if you just like this one enough that you don't need to check out other videos to know that you want to subscribe. That's cool. Every Monday though I post new book releases to show what book releases are coming out this week. I also do unboxings and vlogs and we have a giveaway going on right now. So go check out the announcement video for that for sure and uh, I hope that you guys will subscribe, stick around, join us for future things and enter the giveaway. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope you're finding something awesome to read and I'll see y'all later.